to the YouTube channel. I haven't been here in a while. I don't know if you noticed, I haven't posted a lot on social media or whatever, um, or YouTube in a while. And I'm kind of here to tell you what happened. Now, not a ton of people know this, but unless you like, you know, may have been uh, friends with my wife on Facebook or whatever, but I didn't post a lot of this. I didn't want a lot of attention. Didn't want a lot of people coming at me asking questions that I didn't really know how to answer yet. So here I am to answer kind of what's been going on. On Wednesday, the 23rd of November, um, we were having Thanksgiving at my parents' house and um, we got into a political discussion after dinner. Uh, my brother-in-law, he's very, he gets very heated about things. And so he went on and on about this one issue that my brother and I were just kind of telling him how we feel about a certain thing. And then he got kind of very heated and he started yelling, getting upset. And I thought there was gonna be an altercation at my parents' house. This is a parent, the home where I grew up. I grew up in a very good family. We didn't yell at each other. We were very calm in every situation that we handled things. And so for me, I felt very uh, threatened in that situation. His kids were there, blah, blah, blah. I thought there was gonna be a fight. Um, at one point, he was coming to tell me bye. I thought he was charging at me. And, and right then when that happened, my heart started beating almost out of my chest. And it was very scary for me. Um, it was, I had a lot of shortness of breath. Uh, you know, I could, I could feel my heart through, beating throughout my whole body. And it was scary. So I stayed at my parents' house, kind of chilling on the couch, just hoping that my heart would beat, would slow down. And it never really, truly did. It just kind of kept beating and beating. I could, I could see my shirt kind of moving. And that was, that was scary. So what I did was, uh, I just kind of ignored it for a little bit um, until we got home and I was laying in bed and I could still feel it. Um, and sometime between like when I went to bed, I knew that I could never really fall asleep. And then next thing I know it's four o'clock in the morning. So best I can tell is I probably like passed out in the middle of the night from my heart beating too fast. And I woke up and I told Molly, I was like, hey, um, I can feel, feel my chest and see if it feels weird. And she put her head on it and she was like, yeah, that we need to go to the emergency room. And I was like, really? And she was like, yeah. And so we headed to the emergency room. Four o'clock in the morning, Thanksgiving morning. So we get in there, we walk in there and everything's calm. We fill out a little paper. Um, they walk us back to one of the ER rooms. And then, uh, then she, she puts the EKG on me and they start checking stuff. And she's like, oh no. And literally within 10 seconds, there was probably 12 people in there uh, hooking me up to machines, getting the defibrillator out, um, getting ready to do whatever it took to get my heart back on rhythm. At that point, it was beating somewhere around 250 beats per minute. I don't know if you know much about the heart, but the normal heartbeat is supposed to be somewhere between like 60 and like 90. If you're like a female, maybe in the higher range, male, more athletic, uh, lower range. But yeah, my heart was beating like crazy. And they came in and they said that it had something called atrial fibrillation. Thanksgiving day, from the morning, early morning of Thanksgiving day until by the end of the night, being rushed from the ER to the, the ICU and then having a uh, thing called a cardioversion where the cardiologist came in and they shocked my heart back into rhythm. Um, in the ER they tried to chemically put my heart back into rhythm by trying to stop it three times and they were pumping me off with all sorts of chemicals uh, trying to get it up and you know super scary and all at once and very fast and I was like I don't know how to I don't know what this means for me. A lot, of, a lot of things they were saying that it was probably the ketogenic diet. They were saying it was a lot of things that could have been like pre-workout, working out and lifting heavy. Um, the things that I love, and I kind of had like a, a miniature like identity crisis in myself because like my whole social media is based around that. My whole, um, you know, my whole goals for YouTube is based around that. And I was like, how do I recoup from that? And how do I, how do I build from that? It was a super scary time for me and I didn't want to post about it and I didn't want to get a lot of people involved to answer questions that I didn't, I didn't know how to answer myself. Um, and so until I got some answers, I didn't want to put out a video even to kind of let my fans know or people who were watching and whatever, um, know what was really going on until I really knew what I was, what was going on. So this week we kind of figured something out. I have a, a disease called, uh, a birth defect called Wolf Parkinson White. And it's not like a Parkinson's or anything like that. It just means that I have an extra passageway in my heart um, for the current to flow through to say, you know, to not beat in the right way that my heart should. And so that was like very encouraging for me when I went to the doctor because it wasn't an issue of um, something I did or something I could have stopped. 
it was an issue of something that I had no control over. So all my efforts to be, you know, in shape and take care of myself and the ketogenic diet and everything that I believed in was really like still true. And the only thing wrong with me was something that I was born with and something that I couldn't change. Um, in fact, when I did, when I got all my blood work back and stuff like that, my blood work was perfect. Um, my blood pressure was perfect. I have a history of blood pressure and obesity in my family and it's something that I fight with fitness. So knowing that, knowing that it wasn't something that I was doing to myself was like a huge encouragement. And so like now I'm going to kind of show you like a drawing and the scientific side of things, like mildly scientific. I'm not like a doctor by any means, but I'm going to kind of show you what they showed me and how it makes a little more sense now. So this is kind of what your heart looks like. Um, doesn't look like you know the typical Valentine's Day heart or what you actually think it does. And so I learned a lot about this. And so if some of my information is wrong, um, it's okay. But I do know kind of like a gist of how like it's supposed to be. Um, so you have the top part of your heart, which is the atria, and the bottom part of your heart, which is the ventricle. Um, blood is going to come in through. Uh, through the top part of your atria through here and then it's going to process to where it gets goes through this little guy here and that's called the AV node and so as it as the current or whatever flows through here it's going to kind of go in this direction and then it's going to go down here into your, your big pumper your uh, left ventricle and it's going to go back to the AV node and then disperse through your lungs and throughout the rest of your body through your left atria. And so that's kind of how like a normal heart kind of works. Um, and that's how kind of the current kind of flows in your body. And that's where you kind of get the double heartbeat that you're kind of you used to hearing the ba bum ba bum ba bum. It's coming through here and pulsating and then going down here and then pulsating back out through your body. So in and then out, the ba-boom, ba-boom, uh, which is kind of cool. It's something I didn't actually know um, until I started looking at this. Um, but everything gets processed, processed through this, this little thing called the AV node. And then you have the cartilage that kind of like separates this here in this area. And so what's going on with me is I have an extra passageway in here somewhere and so what's going on is I have these these currents that flow through and instead of kind of going around here it may go through here and then like kind of stick around and then get jumbled and so I was having an AFib which is an atrial fibrillation and it was quivering because this wasn't pumping back out properly and this was just kind of going crazy kind of haywire because of the electric current that was just kind of throwing it off. And so, because I have this extra little passageway, which was my birth defect, which is called Wolf Parkinson White, um, it will go through there and flow through there, and it may, or on this side maybe, you know, I don't really know exactly where it's at, but it, it's, it's somewhere in here that's causing it to flutter. And so, what they're going to do, what the plan is to have um, this catheter go up through my groin and it's going to go up through this kind of area here and then through here and it's going to find this area and it's going to um, it's going to burn it up it's going to close that thing so that it's processed through the right area so it may so what it was doing is it may have going through the AV node then pumping out through here and then confusing my heart and it wasn't processed the correct way. Um, there's a lot of things that the doctors could have done wrong but they did everything right luckily and um, once that fix is fixed here and closed back up everything should go back in the normal kind of direction it was going in to begin with. So the question now is kind of like what comes next and for me that's that's the surgery where they're going to go up and the cardioablation surgery where they're going to go up and they're going to kind of cauterize the, the tissue that's causing that, that extra passageway to go through. Um, it's something that I was born with uh, and you know that seems like a scary thing but it's like 
I'm glad I got it taken care of at a young age to where I won't have to be, I'm young enough to go and get the surgery done to where I won't have to like deal with it ever again. And it won't be something where I have to worry about, you know, my heart um, having problems and taking pills for the rest of my life. Um, but yeah, so what this means for me next is after I have the surgery, we're looking to hopefully have that done by the end of the year. I would start back keto and start back fitness and slowly kind of show you guys how I'm getting back into the normal swing of life. Right now it's very weird for me. I don't go to the gym, I can't work out. Um, and they tell me I can't lift weights, I can't do anything except walk. And so a huge portion of my life is like missing right now. And it's really, really kind of sad, really kind of, uh, you know, depressing, but it's like something that I know is going to get better. And so I kind of want to take you guys along with me and you guys can see that, um, how I recoup and how I get back into it. Um, but yeah, um, I hope you um, enjoy this video. Um, it's very encouraging for me to put this out here uh, so that you kind of give you guys a little feeling on what's going on. Um, but yeah, keep me in your prayers, keep me in your thoughts um, as we go through this. I'll make sure to keep you guys updated as we go through. I meet with the cardiologist on the 11th and I find out some more, more about the surgery, more about what the future looks like for me. And yeah, so if you like the video, share it around, let your friends know. Uh, if, you, if you have people who are interested in what's been happening with me or something like that, let them know um, what's been going on. But yeah, thank you for watching. Bye.